Howdy guys, it's been a while since I've done one of these, and today I have a 1994 WGP autococker. This thing is numbered uh, 14,878. Um, when I got it, it was not configured like this. I have made a couple changes. Uh, I do have all of the stock parts. Um, so I've done a autococker show um, before, so I'm not going to get too much into the operation and the history of these guns. Um, but this one vastly predates my other autococker by about 10 years. Um, and one thing I've changed up on this is the barrel. It does have the original barrel. It is a black tube that's probably about this long. Um, no porting. Uh, it's probably, the walls of the barrel are probably about that thick. It, it is a thick piece of metal. Um, when I got this, um, <clears throat> it basically did not have a high pressure reg. Um, it just took air, well, it took CO2 uh, straight from a CO2 canister that the previous owner had lined up as a uh, uh, remote line. Uh, one thing you will notice about this autococker, among many things, is uh, that it doesn't have a ball detent. So these early cockers didn't have detents. Um, a lot of people say that's to their disadvantage, and it is, but if you know how to shoot them, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you know, you're just quick about closing the, the bolt there, and it, it'll, be, it'll be fine. Um, this one also has a custom brass trigger shoe uh, that I was informed was an aftermarket part, and I believe it is, based on some of the pictures I've seen. Um, also, when I bought this, it did not have the original LPR. Uh, I'm not quite sure what kind of LPR it came with, whether it was the stock WGP sledgehammer. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but what I've got on here is a Palmer's Micro Rock. Uh, what it came with was a Palmer's Rock, which is basically the same thing except longer. Um, and unfortunately, that thing just didn't... It just wanted to die. Uh, I got it apart, but... Uh, it had basically rusted itself shut, and in the process of getting it apart, I ended up bending the wall of the reg, um, which was sad, but now I've got a micro rock. Um, the bolt is actually, I don't think it's a stock bolt. Uh, this is a Venturi bolt with a Delrin tip. I believe when these were made new, this would have been just a completely solid aluminum bolt. Uh, it does have this old kind of push pin style of uh, bolt retainer, whatever the fuck you call it. Bolt pin, that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> I have also been told that the internals have been upgraded from their stock internals. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I haven't actually had to take this thing apart because it still fucking works. You know, I had to rebuild the front pneumatics, um, but the valve itself was fine. Um, I imagine that the O-rings in there are basically like chewing gum right now, but they seem to be holding their pressure. Um, another interesting thing about this is the finish on it. It's kind of, I don't know, the light's picking it up pretty well. It's this weird kind of like almost matte, almost gloss finish. Uh, and that's kind of what you get with these old cockers. They're just this kind of weird, weird like black finish that's, just, you know, midnight black. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that the timing rod here is black. Um, the cocking rod on this side is silver, but that's because I actually swapped over the part from my other cocker onto this. This was the same kind of weird black kind of matte color that this was. So this thing was completely blacked out. 
except for a couple silver accents back here, which was really cool. Um, the drop I also put on it. Uh, as I said, the guy had a remote line on this that just ran straight in there. Uh, and he didn't have an ASA on it, so I put this ASA on it uh, because I like cockers being super tight. And, uh, you know, this thing doesn't have a beaver tail, so you got to watch yourself. Um, another interesting little factoid about this is that they didn't originally come drilled up here. So that's to adjust the, uh, I think it's called the lug nut, um, that basically... Uh, you adjust this to adjust when the sear drops, basically. I mean, that's a bad way to describe it. When the hammer drops on the sear. Um, it also had a little drill mark made in there so that you can just access this bolt when you want to take the grip frame off. Uh, and these were just all kind of like little lifestyle improvements that were made to these old cockers that were basically just solid pieces of aluminum that had tubes drilled out of them and uh, valves put in so that you could shoot paint through them. Um, this thing is a hell of a lot of fun to shoot. Um, another thing you'll notice that I've got on here is uh, the Remember the Ronin uh, 45 degree feed neck that actually pushes the hopper back over top of the gun here. Um, this I bought pretty much exclusively for this gun. I tried to go with a silver and black with brass accents look on this, and I think I accomplished it pretty well. Um, you know, looking at this thing, it, it looks it looks old, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't look 23 years old. Uh, it's in surprisingly good condition considering how old it really is. Um, you know, the guy who I got it from, uh, said he used to play tournaments, um, and I've still got the front shroud for it. It is a metal top with a very, very thick neoprene bottom, um, and, you know, it basically never lived on the paintball gun. Um, you can see a couple marks on the corners here where, uh, the shroud, I assume it's the shroud, uh, kind of going on and coming off. Uh, has worn away the anno, um, but by and large, you know, this thing is in immaculate condition. It's got the original grip panels, uh, you know, it's got all the original parts except for the, the LPR. I don't think it ever actually came with a high-pressure reg. I think when these guns were sold, uh, they came without a high-pressure reg, and uh, the guy who I bought it from, um, at least what he claims is that he played tournaments with this um, and basically over the course of his four years or whatever playing tournaments he would just make small little lifestyle upgrades to this so that it would be easier to maintain uh, be a little snappier if you needed to adjust the LPR on the fly because when you use CO2 and the CO2 cools down the pressure goes down so as the pressure goes down you need to crank the pressure on your LPR up in order to maintain the snappiness in that back block as you shoot right so you know you're right um, I've super fun to use uh, you know most people don't know how old this is when you take it out, as I was saying. And one of the, basically the reason I bought this, I had no idea how old it was either. I didn't know the serial number when I bought it, but the reason I bought it was because of this slider trigger. You never really get slider triggers on guns anymore. Uh, you know, the, the Empire Sniper has one because Empire knows that slider triggers are the fucking bomb. Um, but you just never really see it anymore. This one is actually an adjustable slider trigger, so you can uh, stop it from, basically, it's a one-point adjustable trigger. You can stop it from the full trigger pull um, by adjusting how deep this screw sits in there. Super nice gun, super fun to play with. You know, with the uh, this huge Palmer's reg on here. I mean, it's it's crazy consistent. Um, 
And it's really rewarding to pick people off with their $2,000 brand new space guns with a 23-year-old autococker that you used to rock people in tournaments. And uh, yeah, just a lot of fun. So here you go. Just thought I would show this to everyone as a kind of nice, easy way to get back into the Tom's Gun Show. Alrighty. Peace.